Last time on Square Roots, we catch that chocobo, debt collect a waka, and snag some sweet uniforms. Plus, Riku compares her breast size to Yunen. Seriously? Do men think that women really do that? It's not like you sit around measuring each other. Or do you? Tell the truth. What can I do for you? Everybody and welcome to Square Roots, the classic RPG podcast. I'm your host, Vanessa. I'm joined here by my friendos, uh, Matt. Hey, why don't you point your titties north and step on the gas? No, stop saying that. <laughs> and John uh, Deep Tissue Brandon. What's this for? Jacking off? What? What? <laughs> Oh, this is a terrible show. <laughs> Listeners, open your podcast app, hit the pause button, take some time, think about your life, think about the kind of media you really want to consume, and after that, if you're ready to come back, we welcome you with open arms, but no judgment, you know? You do what you need to do for your own health and safety. <laughs> uh, we will be joined later by Jimmy Banks, theoretically. Uh, he is doing something right now, and we don't know what. It's very mysterious. Anyway, this uh, show yep. is where we play a classic RPG and talk about it one chonker at a time. One chonker this at series, a time. That's right. It's like a chapter of a book, but it's a chonker because Ooh. we like chonky games. Chonky. This game has chapters. Are we playing one chapter at a time? We are not playing one chapter at a time because that would be too much playing. Mm -hmm. We're playing one chonker you at can't, a time. You can't make me play this game for more than a couple hours at a time. <laughs> Or I'm not going to be on these episodes. <laughs> this is the greatest game we've ever played on the show, and it is called Final Fantasy X-2. Ooh, part That's four. Right. Final, Final Fantasy X-2. Ten ten to whom, Vanessa? Uh, ten to all of us from the good people at Square Enix. Vanessa's happy because this game proves she's better at video games than I am. That's right. <laughs> it's a girl game, so I can play it. <laughs> well, no, that's not what I meant. <laughs> I meant that you had uh, no problem with bosses I was having a difficult time with. That is true. Mm -hmm. uh, this is 2020, the year so twice. We named it twice. And that is why we are only playing sequels to games we played before. It's true. Mm -hmm. And I believe this is episode four of our Final Fantasy X Part Two season. Where'd you hear that from? I think I made it up. Yeah, it sounds like. Uh, but before we talk about the chonker, you gotta that assume we I was right because nobody week, corrected me. We like to do a little segment we call "Level Up." Matt. Yes, ma'am. How did you level up? I leveled up in a lot of ways. The most important way is that I watched a movie on Stars called uh, an American classic from the year nineteen ninety something called Hard Target. And that's where my delightful intro <laughs> came from. You know, Jim and I were talking about it, and he referred to it as poetry, and I believe that he's right. Uh, yeah, we know you watched it because you messaged that line to our group chat, like, on the hour, every hour. Yeah, it's been pretty good. I'm also and responding to everything you, John, or Jim say with only... Point your titties north and step on the gas. Yeah, it's great and uh, productive, and we love it. It's like the new Shrug Man emoji. Uh, I hate <laughs> Shrug Man emoji. Uh, what did I do this week? Um, I played a couple of great new games. Uh, Streets of Rage 4, uh, which I'm playing on Xbox Game Pass, is a great uh, throwback-y beat-em-up game. With new characters and stuff. Uh, and modern, really slick, awesome looking animation. Uh, animated, you know, look at ass graphics. 
Uh, this one, you still have the blonde boy from all the games. Alex, I think is his name. And you also have, um, the one lady and the dude with the giant metal arms and then the girl with the guitar. She's the best. Barrett? <laughs> Not gun arms, John. Metal arms. Jax? Yes, Jax. Okay. Except for he's beefy Jax. He's very beefy. Didn't Digo also have metal arms? I don't know who that is. He was from Rogue Galaxy. Oh. Yeah, he did, for sure. Anyway, uh, check that out. That's a lot of fun. I've also been playing a game called Lonely Mountains, which is a weird, like, hard-to-control mountain biking game where you bike down a mountain. Um, it's one of those you die every 10 seconds and keep trying type games and like learning new paths down this mountain. Um, super fun to play. It's not like tricks or anything like that. Just a brake and acceleration and bicycle controls as you skate down the side of a mountain. I've done a lot of flying off the mountain and smacking into other mountains and it's a lot of fun. It's got that PS, like, throwbacky, like, old PlayStation-ish, but, like, modernized kind of uh, aesthetic where everything's really polygonal and, like, when you, like, smack into the side of a cliff, all the blood that spurts out is are, like, squares. Squares of <laughs> oh, blood like- spurt out of you. It's a lot of fun. I like that kind of... That kind of PS retro PS one throwback is my, my my favorite aesthetic. I think. Yeah, this is just the type of game that like the controls feel like really it's really fun to maneuver try to maneuver your way down the mountain real quick about getting right back on your feet when you lose or when you when you crash and uh, real arcadey and and just a lot of fun. So I would recommend both of you check that out. Maybe I will. Well, actually, Maybe it does sound like- I won't. Oh. Huh. I watched an amazing movie called Bloodshot that I really enjoyed with Vin Diesel, even though Vin Diesel was kind of terrible in it. And it wasn't actually very good. It just had a lot of interesting twists. But I don't think either of you have seen that, huh? So I, I heard about seen it, it on Yeah, Flophouse I heard about it on Flophouse and, as well. And the other one, uh, why, how did uh, this get made? Yeah, that's right. They both did it. Did they both yeah. do it? Yikes. I haven't listened, yeah, within I haven't like listened a to week either one in a while. Other. I thought it was a pretty good movie for the most part. I mean, if, if it's a, it's definitely like a Fast and the Furious style or like John Wick, but not as clever style action movie where really you're just watching a series of action scenes with, you know, some nonsense thrown in the middle to make a, give them an excuse to do it. But this one had some good special effects and, uh, several twists that I didn't see coming that I thought made it pretty okay. It was nonsense, but it was your kind of nonsense. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's not a great movie by any stretch of the imagination, but I enjoyed the hell out of it. Anyway, that's how I leveled up. Those are all of my things. You know, it's COVID era leveling up. Everything is, I watched something. Uh, Vanessa. Uh, yes. How did you level up? Ah, I have also watched things. First, I got myself a hard cider some french fries that I put milky cheese and guacamole on, and I watched a movie called Hustlers. Hey! Starring Jennifer Lopez as Hustler. Is that her superhero name? That's her superhero name. It was okay. It's a true story about these women who were exotic dancers, uh, and then the financial... Crisis of 2008 happened, and they started struggling to make ends meet. So they decided that men would uh, spend more money on them if they just uh, gave them a roofie and took their credit card. And they ran this scam for a good long time because the men were married or wealthy enough that they didn't mind if suddenly there was a charge for like $5,000 on their card. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, they ran it until they sort of ran out of good targets and started targeting other people. And that's when they got in trouble. It's a movie with a lot of exotic dancing. So if you like that, you'll like this movie. Like Showgirls. Like Showgirls, but better and more realer. And I have also been watching a cartoon for children called She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. She Yes. When I was five years old, mm-hmm. 
I broke my little arm mm-hmm. right in two. We've heard this Both story bones. before. I was in the hospital, <laughs> and my hospital treat was getting She-Ra dolls. And I got the horse with the wings, and I got Mantana. And the nurses loved Mantana. They walked him around the hospital, poking his eyes out at each other, and uh, it was great. I liked Shira a lot. I played with the dolls forever and ever. I still have them in the basement. Don't come to my basement. You're not invited. But I haven't watched the new cartoon on Netflix, so I gave it a try, and I like it very much. It's sort of like a Teen Titans-y, I guess, that kind of vibe. Uh, maybe a little less serious. Classic but, Teen uh, titans not like Teen titans Yeah, Go-y. classic Teen Titan-y. It's a... Uh, you can watch the episodes as standalone, but it makes a lot more sense to watch it as a series. That's what it was designed to be. I like the new designs of the characters. It's definitely new style animation. When it came out, men were very upset because they did not want to sleep with the new She-Ra cartoon. Uh, so they thought that that was a betrayal to all things She-Ra because, of course, what is the point of a character if you don't want to sleep with her? Mm-hmm. But uh, as it turns out, uh, there's lots of points. It's real good, especially if you have young female children or male children. It has good messaging. It has uh, male and female characters working together. Uh, Jim is back. Welcome, Jim. Who? Hi. I had a uh, I had a minor emergency. I had to attend to. Are you going to tell us what the item was? Yeah, I'm kind of glad it happened because now I have something to talk about in my level up. Oh, but sweet. <laughs> Let I... me finish mine then. Then I'll throw it over to you. Okay. My, uh, my, I, I went... said, let me finish I... mine. <laughs> she I said, left... let I said, her finish. Let me oh, finish oh, I thought you said you were going to pass it over. All right. <laughs> no. No, please, please, by all means, finish. And that's how I leveled up. Jim, <laughs> how did you level up? <laughs> well uh i went i left my room where my mic and stuff is to ask my daughter if her and her friend wanted some pizza and she goes yes but i need to go to the bathroom first and i was like you have a bathroom why can't you go to the bathroom and she goes we accidentally locked both the doors and the cat is in there <laughs> and so like oh. i had to i had to figure out how to unlock the doors from the outside um and then free the cat. <laughs> How'd you do it? <laughs> uh, I I found a a flathead screwdriver bit that was sh- like small enough to go into the hole where like the emergency lock. Yeah, the, turn the is. paper clip hole thing, right? Yeah, but it's like this one's like you need like a flathead thing to turn it. Oh. So I was able to get just barely in there far enough to twist it enough to to undo the lock, but it took forever. Wow. So I had no idea what I was doing. I was just like shoving things at it or jiggling the handle a bunch, trying to get it to loosen, but it wouldn't happen. I like how they were just sort of not going to tell you that the cat was in there. I I didn't know until I had been working on that thing for like t- maybe 10 minutes at that point. And I was like, where's the cat? And they're like, oh, well, she might be in there. And I was like, the cat's in the bathroom? <laughs> and they're like, yeah. <laughs> Monsters. Yeah. So... um. That was how I leveled up. I freed a I freed an animal from captivity. You and Matt also said you watched Hard Target as well. I think right. I did watch Hard Target. I <laughs> forgot how charming that movie is. Is it? <laughs> it is a no, fun time it's at the not movies. Not charming. It's fun, but it's certainly not charming. It is full of greasy men spouting off misogynistic and homophobic nonsense at each other there is the okay i'm i'm, <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm just an I'm not insane amount of, of slow that. motion <laughs> but it but is the I do best love, movie ever made i do love jvd's greasy mullet i love the fact that he apologizes for being homeless a lot uh <laughs> I like that he doesn't have a driver's license. Yeah, that's a good scene where he's just like, actually, I don't drive. <laughs> he's like, I do not have a driver's license. <laughs> oh, man. Even the detective lady, when she files a missing persons report, pulls a birthday cake out of her desk drawer uh-huh. with a lit candle on it. <laughs> like, <it's- laughs> Wow. <laughs> she could have burned the place down. <laughs> like, it's all just like weird heightened reality, and it's so silly. 
there are so many shots that are in slow mo for no actual reason. <laughs> like there are shots of Jean Claude Van Damme standing still looking off camera that are in slow motion because it's got that almost like that old school like sh- stop motion effect on it. It's terrible. There's is it John a scene Wu? where it John is Claude John Van Damme is just John looking- Wu's first American movie. Yeah, he was. There's a shot of JVD just looking out onto the ocean, and the camera like comes in slowly and moves like around his head, so you can get like all of it. Ooh, you know what's funny about JCVD? Like he caught a rash of shit back in the day. I remember from like the media and you know hillbillies and stuff for not being like an actual tough guy. The whole thing was always Jean Claude Van Damme. You know he's a dancer, and he would Is fit that like in Johnny Cage, where they thought Johnny yeah, Cage was that's just what an actor. Johnny Cage's gimmick was based on. No, oh. and uh, he would fit in so well today with the modern action star, who is just nothing but a chicken and vegetables diet and weightlifting, and <laughs> and a gymnast. Basically, that's what it is, and that's fine. I'm not complaining I mean, Jackie, about it. Jackie Chan's a ballet guy. Um. Yeah. Remember Anyways, Steven? yes, I, I did watch that movie. Y'all about my dream to produce a reality show where wrestlers and ballet dancers get together and learn each other's craft. No. I think it would be a great show. I you think there's a that. lot of similarities, and it would be amazing. I think you need to get started on your pitch. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Yeah, I'll write a treatment. Don't steal my idea. Copyright, copyright, copyright. <laughs> Too late. Well, do you have a? Uh, how about calling it "Lace Up" because that works for both of them. Oh, that's a great one. Yeah. I was thinking like um, professional wrestlers, though. Yeah, like they have to WWE. Lace up the, yeah, they lace up their boots. They have like yeah, five hundred laces. Yeah. Oh, do they? Do they have yeah. little booties? No, I don't they know very much don't. about wrestling. They just wear whatever shoes they want, but that's definitely still a wrestling like term, like we're lacing up your boots. Or like a I mean that's just like a gym term, right? Like anything you have yeah. to lace it anyway. Yeah, but but ballet <laughs> is like has like famously they're always lacing up their dancing shoes and wrestlers <sighs> have those really complicated boots with a million laces. Or not a million laces, just really long million little holes. <laughs> Who still has to level up? Who has not leveled up? John needs to level up. John, how do you level up? need to level up. Uh, I leveled up by uh, playing the game Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, now with bots. Because <laughs> uh, basically they've kind of, they have a ton of maps now and, and like they have a ranked mode with no bots. And so for like basic normal mode, now they have bots to like fill out games and also help people get into it. Because if you try playing PUBG against humans and you haven't played it before, it's just like, what the? Dead. But I'll just go. Yeah. Let me uh, move over. Dead. When I got, I think it was Uncharted 3, I tried to play Uncharted, maybe it was Uncharted 2, I played it online a lot, and when I first started, I was like, I am kicking ass, I am so good at this, and then I googled it, and they, if it was like your first like 20 matches, they just put you up against some bots, <laughs> and then I went to play actual humans and got destroyed. I tried PUBG Mobile when that first came out, and was and got a win on my first match and was like, what? This is insane. <laughs> PUBG's the hardest game. At that point, I think I'd only gotten one win in PUBG proper. And uh, and then after playing it a few more times, I was like, oh, half of these people don't move around. And I'm like, oh, half of these things are bots. The <laughs> So there's a couple of things. One, uh, I think it's a pretty, it's like maybe a half and half mix because there are bots for me to get kills, but I still die. Like I'm still yeah. like 20th place. So there's still plenty of human players. It's just a matter of finding the bots because they, they, they do, they can kill you. I think I've been killed by bots a few times. So they kind of walk in circles uh, most yeah. of the time. Um, when it first got introduced, uh, one of the YouTube streamers, PUBG streamers that I watch, the beard guys, uh, talked did a video on it and they said that at times, depending on the, the game mode they were picking, uh, they were getting upwards of 80% bots. And even in the low end, it seemed like 50% or 40% bots. Yeah. Unfortunately. I'm, I'm uh, fine with it as a terrible player. I, it's actually letting me practice and get some kills in. So I think that there is some benefit to it. 
Yeah, I mean, I can see that, but as a long-term player, like, I don't want to go play a game against bots. But there is so a I'm mode with no bots. Super not ranked. interested. Well, <laughs> that's a good Just play ranked. Okay, so can we call non-ranked bots? Can we call that the bots? Well, yeah, that's the thing. I think maybe they I should I don't want to play ranked, playlist. because I don't need the fucking bullshit that comes with rank. I just want to play the game. <laughs> Uh, also, the better you are, the apparently the less bots you'll see. Uh, I'll, and I am terrible, so maybe I don't know. I won't be seeing you not ever bots hear for a while. That they might be giant song that goes. Here's hoping you don't become a robot. Clang, 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 uh-huh. clang. Whoops, too late. Nope, mm-hmm. I've never heard that. That's a great song. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also have been feeling really claustrophobic, so I did two things. One, I went for like a long like four hour drive north or uh yeah north east uh through the mountains and that was really nice and uh i've been playing fallout new vegas and fallout 4 just to wander around pretty well pretty ish desolate open areas and get to a sense of being outside and moving around didn't you okay. say that you didn't play new vegas no that wasn't you that was me yeah it's um, jam john uh, i also play so really many play games simultaneously because I never finished them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like I, I, I want to play a game for like an hour and then play a different game. That's usually how I feel. No, oh, that's what Xbox that. Game Pass is for. I, Ooh, I started playing. That. I started playing Alan Wake today on that's Game cool. Pass. Yeah, uh, Jim. I, I told them before you shut up that I started playing Streets of Rage Four on Game Pass. <laughs> is that pretty cool? It's fucking cool, man. It and looks nice. Uh, I've been playing Lonely Mountains, that mountain biking game that's like... Oh, that super hard one? It's super fun, though. Like, it's... Because <laughs> it, it's quick. Like, you crash, and it reloads you within, like, a split second. So, like, there's no time loss. No. You're just trying and trying and trying to get that loop this time, or I'm going to make that jump this time. <laughs> there's checkpoints on the way down. It's real addictive. I uh, also beat uh, the Great One, and what was the name of that graveyard spider? Dark something? Oh. Parl? In Dark Beast Parl. Yeah, I, I beat both of those. I killed nice. two bosses in one session. I felt You've become a real sweet. hardcore gamer lately. Yeah, I've been trying to play like more challenging games, and with mixed results. Anyway, I think that's about <laughs> it. How about... That explains his shirt that says, Shira wasn't made to make me attractive, and I'm angry about it. Make me attractive? <laughs> To be attractive to me, and I'm angry about it. <laughs> I kind of like right? that, the, the I'm first trying to tie things back together <laughs> by applying that she, sorry, gamers She-Ra. and men that don't like hardcore gamers and men that are mad about Shira, kind of the same people, I, right? Uh, could someone <laughs> please make me a 2XL shirt that says Shira wasn't made to make me attractive? Uh, and and I'm me. mad about it. And I'm mad about it. <laughs> and yeah. I, that's what it says. And then on the back, back it says, it. take that cartoon and point its tits north and step on the gas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a very complicated shirt. I see. I like the front of the shirt. I don't like the back. Could you make one for me without that back part? Yeah. And for I Vanessa? <laughs> no, I won't make it for Vanessa. Oh, okay. Uh, she well. was made to make me attractive. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> All the time, I'm running into people, and they're like, whoa, you're just like She-Ra. And I'm like, damn straight, aren't you attracted to me now? And they're like, yeah. And then I'm like, be my boyfriend. And they're like, no. <laughs> hey, yeah, and Vanessa, I'm how many, all alone. <laughs> how many seasons into She-Ra are you, Vanessa? Oh, not even all the way through season one. Oh. But I heard some talk that the new season is good, so yeah, I'm looking too. forward to getting there. Yeah, I'm going to try to watch it. I watched the first season with my daughter, and we loved it. But my son did not like it, because it was all girls. <laughs> and uh, after the first season, he genuinely started getting really mad at us. Like, I think he felt like we were trying to exclude him by watching the show that's all about girls. So, I mean, I know that's not right. But also, he's it's eight, not right. and he's not going to understand it when I explain it to him. He might. So we started watching My Hero Academia instead. Mm. Eh, I mean, my daughter's fucking obsessed with it obsessed all right but don't let him off the hook forever i knew this kid when he was like 13 he wouldn't see crouching tiger hidden dragon because it starred a girl it's fucking wow. ridiculous yeah that and is ridiculous that kid grew up to be joe rogan uh, <laughs> when i when i was a kid loxana troy was my favorite star trek person that's monstrous john you know how i feel about her 
She's great. Uh, is it mission time? I have been. It's mission time. It is mission time, but I just want to say that I have been incredibly frustrated to find that Luxwana Troy is also an every season has to have an episode cast member of DS9, like she was no, Star Trek The Next she, Generation. She's in okay. two episodes. Well, I'm in season four, and she's been in three, so. <laughs> sure, she's coming soon in season four. <laughs> she's much more likable now. Anyway, it's mission that time! Episode, that episode with Odo was really good, the one with her and Odo. That's like yeah, my favorite. Lu- one of my favorite Luxana episodes. They're better than the they're better than the TNG episodes where she's impossible and yeah. Is it mission time? Patrick Stewart is too proper to just be like, "Yo, bitch, <laughs> John's fuck really off!" Really trying to get this thing on track. It's really time. trying to put the mission time. <laughs> Blanc Chateau. It's an infiltration mission. Are you ready to go? Not really. First, we got Yuna. Her skill is stabs. She used to be a sender, but now she hasn't been. I'm not like Vanessa, okay? I can't just make up songs <laughs> on the fly. You're doing very well. And we were all very, we were wrapped with attention and very really impressed. It was a really good job. I definitely recognize that it was supposed to be a song. And uh-huh. did not uh-huh. just feel confused by what you were trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, and then there's Riku. Uh, okay. So this, uh, this mission is, uh, about infiltration because you uh-huh. got a, a half a sphere stolen by LeBlanc and her, yes. her cronies. Her I'm dudes, syndicate. Her whole syndicate. Uh, so you sneak in there. We've stolen. Uh, three uniforms, and uh, the first thing we do is walk into uh, the dining area, which, uh, this, oh, by the way, uh, Le, Le, Le Blanc Chateau is Seymour's old house. It sure is. Such a tiny piece of shit house, too. It's like three I rooms. I don't know. Do you see Half that? Half of that, the house is stairway. Yeah, but there's that dining room, too. Yeah, look at how they live in, um, what's it called? Uh, you know, Yuna's hometown. Besaid. Yeah, we're just live in a they tent. just live in a tent. That's true. That's a good point. I, I think uh, could... oh. When I was playing this, I was delighted to notice a portrait of Mabu still hanging on the wall in the stairwell. <laughs> Seymour himself, his smiling face. Looking All the out maesters, at me. I think, are there. Mm hmm. Like, and Seymour was like, Yuna, all this might have been yours. And I was like, I'm sorry, Seymour. <laughs> so we sneak in in our awesome, uh, what are they called? Goons? You know, fem yeah, goon? Fem goon. Fem goon. In our awesome LeBlanc fem goon uniforms. These things creep me out. The hats are kind of like shaped like... Shaped like hearts, I think, but it's, they wear it's, like a flap in front of their face that's yeah. a heart, and they look out through the heart humps. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's and scary. Hearts on their back and things like this. And let's not forget who we see leaving on our way in. <gasps> who? Nooji Wooji. Oh boy! This is where the game gets goes from hot to cringe. Uh, LeBlanc is super hot for Nuge. Uh-huh. He has been visiting. Uh, uh-huh. He is like, well, I have to go now. And she's like, goodbye, Nuji Wooji. I love you. And then yeah, everyone, terrible. everyone in the syndicate is pretty much gossiping about them and saying, like, it's really weird how she, how different she acts around Nuge. And she tries to be like a good housewife. I don't yeah, just... she she tries to be sweet and like uh, submissive and all of that. Now, how? Wh- wh- like, just tr- okay. It's hard to judge a relationship from one encounter you see. But what do you? Th- how do you feel about the dynamic between those two? Is it healthy? I felt that it was probably a one sided relationship. Mm-hmm. 
where she is sphere hunting for him and in love with him, and he is paying her to sphere hunt and is not in love with her at all. Yeah. The why do but but I think don't Logos and Army say they've been dating for four months? Uh maybe LeBlanc thinks they're dating, but uh we know for oh. a fact that when Nuge left, LeBlanc was not satisfied. That is true. Uh so they were talking about what were they talking about? The Vegna gun? Trying to find that? Yeah. They're gonna find the Vegna gun. Mm-hmm. Everyone wants the Vegna gun. And he uh, he was saying, uh, this is something that Yuna doesn't see, I think, but uh, we know as the audience that he wants to control it. He seems to be giving him her a different line than he gave Yuna. Yes. So I don't know about that. That seems bad. But you're right. LeBlanc is all stressed. She's all tight. She's all anxious. Mm-hmm. As uh, we run into, is it Ori or Ormi? Ormi. Ormi and Logos, and they're like, uh, it's time for you, lady, to use your special skills to help LeBlanc unwind. In the bedroom. Uh, I realized the last episode I, I edited, I've call, I call you to not just, you point out that I call her Lulu sometimes, but I also for like two minutes called Yuna Riku. Yes. <laughs> uh, you really struggle with Yuna's name. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Jimbury, I don't mean to put you on the spot, mm-hmm. but I'm going to. Okay. Did you play this segment of the game? I did. Do you want to tell us what happens up in the bedroom? Yeah, so uh, Yuna gives LeBlanc a massage, and it's actually a pretty cool mini game. Uh, I liked it, but I bet you did, you pervert. <laughs> it was it was really weird, and I didn't. It made me uncomfortable how expressive LeBlanc was. Um, and then she like falls asleep. After she has her her massage orgasm. Yeah. (laughs) She's just so relaxed. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially, the game is you have to choose where to press on her back. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to inch your way closer to the hot spot. And when you hit it, uh, John, what does she do? Uh, Oh, uh, like that. (laughs) Uh, I think that's more like when you're close and then when actually you get there, she's like, yes, yes, yes. Oh, that's right. A sound I've never heard before. Oh. <laughs> it must have been so confusing. <laughs> like, huh, well, she's having a nice day. <laughs> she's a positive person. Yeah. Are we talking about the massage yet? Yes. 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 Hey, I, how did you feel about the massage scene? Hey, this is a shitty mini game, but oh, I don't uh don't don't ask me questions about this. Okay. She <laughs> does you'll notice like so the massage is Best not in a professional it's not in a professional setting. It's on LeBlanc's bed and mm-hmm. the massage artiste who is Yuna straddles her they work so hard massage. leading up to the massage scene to make you think that you're going to have to go fuck LeBlanc. Like, what? it bends over backwards to be what? like, yo, guess what you're doing now? The boss is really stressed. She really needs some help, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, she gets so worked up after news is here. Yeah, it was fucking wild. Like, I don't want to... Cr- Go ahead. Please. I don't want to overlook the fact that she has a life size statue of Nuge in her bedroom. Uh, oh. Oh, she fucks that statue. Huh. I hope that so, you so- all have noticed that I'm drinking healthy tonight. Oh, White, White Claws. Claws. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so- no. We're in a lawless zone now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, Vanessa, do you guess think- where do- you can go if you want to get out of this lawless zone? Do you think you're usually the LeBlanc in a relationship or the Nuge in a relationship? Or are you the Yuna in the relationship? 
<laughs> I think I'm more like the logos in the relationship. <laughs> well, but he kind of has a thing for LeBlanc, right? Oh, that's true. He does. I guess I'm not the logos. Um, I'm the the shoe puff. <laughs> no, wait. That's in the not relationship. Right I'm the guy that's asking strangers ride Z shoe puff. Ride Z shoe puff. Uh, no, I'm not a shoe puff. I'm a Tombly. I just want to put on the show. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the, the the delicate question there, Vanessa. <laughs> and so, of course, you give the massage, and she moans like you are hitting her fucking G spot like nobody's business. It's crazy. I thought it's she was nuts. just having a nice day. I don't know. That's not how. That's not how I interpreted it. This is a sex scene. <laughs> <laughs> this is a sex scene. Yeah, she does also like pound her little fist and arch her back. Do you think that 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 this is a prof- like? Do you feel like that this has gone a step beyond as a work environment for the syndicate members? Like, oh, it's a syndicate. Yeah. That's not it doesn't matter. I don't think that HR would be happy with what's going on there. I don't think there is HR. <laughs> like I the have something syndicate. to say. Yes. Oh. On our Facebook group, someone posed the question, is this the gayest Final Fantasy game? To which I say, no, this is the straightest shit you're ever going to see. Yeah. Two women that that like, isn't what you said, Vanessa. Rubbing each other and pounding their fists. <laughs> you you act said like there's was... a whole cutscene of them in a hot spring splashing each other. <laughs> Comparing <laughs> chest sizes. You, you, yeah. uh, you did say that this game was right. covered. I said it was covered in the male gaze. <laughs> and John's like, I wish I was covered in male gaze. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Good one, Jim. Hey. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, this is about as gay as any uh, quote unquote lesbian porn that you're going to see oh, on boy. the Playboy channel. You clearly do not spend any time looking up lesbian porn. <laughs> well, I understand. <laughs> like, I've heard tell that it's a lot better these days because women are producing their own content. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you mean porn for lesbians, not lesbian porn. No, I mean, like, stuff that would be directed by a man in the 90s to be sold as lesbian porn. You know, there's there's a uh, a 20-minute long Saturday Night Live sketch from the late 90s I think about a lot oh, that really? involves this. Send it to these... us right now. Don't describe I... it. Send it. <laughs> no, I'm going to explain it to you. All it's right, about fine. these three... Spoil it for us, John. Three straight dude rednecky types that find a genie. And the genie's like, I'll... I'll give you anything you want in the world and they're like okay let's give us two lesbians to have sex right in front of us and then they appear but it's just like normal older women lesbians and they're gonna have like a really <laughs> long lesbian sex scene and then the two guys just kind of walk out but the third guy uh, with the genie's like well no no you gotta stay here or because this won't end until one of you gets a boner <laughs> and, and then and then David Spade's like, oh, I think it's going to end now, eventually, because <laughs> he was into it. That is a very good Saturday Live sketch. <laughs> anyway, I don't know why I thought of that. Maybe it's just what men's expectation of lesbian sex is versus actual lesbian sex. Yeah, there is no question that this is a straight male produced game in my yeah. mind. Which doesn't answer the question of who this game is for. Well, I I don't know. What do you think, Vanessa? I think it was Jim who said that it was for women, but written by men, which yeah. seems to be... But I, I don't know if that. that's true. No, Jim didn't say that. I yeah, d- that's I'm, too insightful for Jim. I've, uh, yeah, so I've never said anything like that. Jim can't string a sentence that long together. Mm-hmm. I think Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy VII Remake are the gayest Final Fantasy games because of, like, the Honey Bee Inn and stuff. Fifteen, though. Fifteen just has has a heterosexual male friendship, which isn't portrayed in media very often. So when it is shown, like, as a tender friendship, people assume it to be homosexual. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, like heterosexual Frodo and male Sam are gay. friendship. <laughs> heterosexual male friendship is to nerdy girls what quote unquote lesbian porn is to nerdy men. Uh, what? Okay, that makes sense. I see what you're saying here. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's that's what you think is gay, but it's just actually straight men being friendly. Right. Mm-hmm. So anytime men aren't trying to kill each other, you're like, maybe gay. Yes. Uh, yeah, they could be trying to kill each other. Like, I've seen 300. That's some gay shit. Or Spider-Man and Skeletor. <laughs> Spider-Man, Spider-Man and Skeletor? Skeletor? Yeah, Spider-Man and Skeletor. <laughs> I'm standing by what I said. It was accurate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, John, like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Moving on. So, uh, next, so after... So John uh, likes big, beefy boys with skeleton faces. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, LeBlanc- like this! Can, LeBlanc- can you imagine, John? I like to imagine you like chatting with with guys, and you finally are like chatting, and you're like, "Hey, do you do you have skeleton legs? I see, I see your <laughs> upper body in your photos, and I'm into that. But do you have skeleton legs? Skeletor has regular beefy boy legs. Yeah, Does he, he have beefy legs? Yeah, he got beefy, beefy legs. He's a skull over, man, except for he's his a, skull. He's a he man character. They were all beefcakes. Top they all to have bottom. the same torso. Maybe he just had big bones. <laughs> no, he was a he was a husky lad. No, Jim might be right. You don't know. Those legs may have been bones. They may have just been real thick bones. Hey, he real man. thick with two C's Do bones. Do you like big bones? Yeah. Um. So they then ask. So in one of maybe the laziest JRPG writing we've seen since maybe Secret of Mana or something, they're like, "Can you go check on that switch downstairs?" Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, what switch? And they go, the secret switch in the living room. <laughs> so, and they call, so they call that giant dining room the living room? Would you, yeah, like, I guess. Would you chill out in that room? It seems like, I don't know. Uh, would, would, would Seymour the... be there? Sorry? <laughs> would Seymour be there? Uh, you know, no, John, but- if you have the right attitude, you can chill out in whatever kind of room you want. Well, you notice the Seymour portrait like looked a bit like a Harry Pottery interactive portrait, right? Yeah, and I tried to interact with it a lot. Do you think uh, is that what porn in Harry Potter world is like? Oh no, I guess it would be. <laughs> it's just videos. <laughs> is that- it like how it work? Uh, is there a wizard that, like, uses magic paint to paint a portrait of a person, and then that portrait is imbued with their essence? Or do they just wave their wand and make a portrait that is a copy of the person? Or do they, like, take a hair from the person and put it in the paintbrush and that make a portrait? I only read the first three books. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I don't recall it explaining this. <laughs> <laughs> I gave up uh, halfway through Order of the Phoenix, unfortunately. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so you you flick that switch after you flicked uh, LeBlanc switch, if you know what I mean. Oh no! Is that uh... a good one? Yeah, that was pretty good. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and uh, you do find a secret passage, and then Payne is like, hey, this sucks. I don't like wearing these itchy outfits. They're awful. I'm going to change back to my goth gear, even though well, we're still in the base. Yeah, Payne says something like, take it up with the boss. And then she's like, oh, no, I'm getting too deep into character. Payne went method. Mm-hmm. I think pain has a tortured past. Hmm. hmm. She does. There is more about pain's tortured past in this chunker. There's some indications that I picked up on for sure. Yeah, with her and Barilai. Uh huh. More like Booalai. I've decided who my boyfriend in this game is, and it is definitely Barilai. But- Sorry, news. You're a stooge. Wow. <laughs> And, and did you didn't you lose a little bit of respect? Well, but is he like? Do you think it's really just a one sided thing where LeBlanc thinks they're in a relationship and they're just working together? 
Uh, maybe more than working, but I really don't think that Nuj has feelings for her. No, I, I don't get that impression either. So I, I kind of feel, I, having been in a, Le, a LeBlanc before, I feel bad for her. Look, in life, we're all going to have many different relationships. Sometimes you're the Nuj and sometimes you're the LeBlanc. That's just the way it and goes. And sometimes <laughs> you're the shoe puff. Sometimes you're, you're the Yuna. Right, the shoe puff? <laughs> so, uh... Yo, I'm this... always the Yuna. She's pining over her imaginary boyfriends. Tell me about it, girl. <laughs> but pain... <laughs> but pain... Pain does uh, switch you out of the uniform, which do you think mid-mission, it is still mission time, switching out of the infiltration uniform you took so much time to get, do you think that was a bad call? Well, I would say so, especially because they are caught not 10 seconds later yep. after having changed. Someone goes, hey, who's there? Who's that changing over there? That someone is Ormi, who you fight about 15 times, this chunker. Let's see. One, two, three. three. Yeah. But 15 if you're like John and you keep getting party wiped. <laughs> yeah. So th <laughs> so this fight against Ormi and a couple of fem goons or no, it's like a doctor goon and a regular goon. Uh, I kept getting huggled to death over and over. And I feel like I'm playing this game wrong because Vanessa had no problem with this fight and I'm over leveled. Yeah. And I was scared because I watched you play it on the Twitch and I was like, oh, no, like I wasn't as high a level as you were even. And uh, it was fine. So I got to figure out what Johnny's doing wrong here. You got to have your tank, your DPS and your healer. Yeah, I think maybe I'm not doing my roles good enough. <laughs> I mean, it helps to have um, a dancer because breakdance is fucking fantastic. And uh, yeah, that's the one I don't. You know what? I, Matt, I think I'll level up dancer and a, and maybe black because Vanessa was using. Uh, we're gonna get gameplay nerdery here mm -hmm. uh, vanessa was using level three spells the the aga spells and i didn't yeah, i don't those. have those yet i got the aga i have pain maxed out as a warrior mm -hmm. and then i have riku as an alchemist and i've leveled that up to where she has free high potions essentially mm -hmm. uh because the alchemist skill Mm -hmm. allow you to mix items in your inventory but it will also allow you to learn to use items without expand or expending your inventory oh that's super cool um, yeah. i haven't really dove, dove into alchemist yet i use gun mage for yuna and for most battles there's an option for her dirt cheap ability in mana wise mp wise mm -hmm. to kind of auto kill whatever's there you know it's like a flaw yeah. and you can just kind of flaunt mm -hmm. it if it's a robot you can shoot it with the robot one and it mm -hmm. works really well between that and pain dealing out fucking i mean i have i also have warrior bat maxed out so yeah i, 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 mm -hmm. I, I do remember. use pain's uh break skills and i use yeah. mental break so you know black magic does more damage Ooh, okay. that's a good idea that's, that's a good tip johnny needs some pro tips pro um, gamer moves it's pretty dope i like the jobs a lot in this game the my only issue with it is that i don't like the swapping jobs in combat thing that it does. What? I mean, I don't dislike it like as a, I, I don't dislike it like, ooh, I hate this, but like, I don't want to be in combat. I don't want to be in random combats so long that I'm like swapping jobs. You know? I always forget, yeah, in regular battles that I can do it. I don't even want to. Like, I, my, in every one of these games we play, I always have the same goddamn plan, which is wipe out the entire field in one turn because I don't like random combat and I don't want to be stuck in it for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, so, But I love jobs and I do like the jobs in this game a lot. I just don't like the way that it is. But, you know, it, it's it's fine. It's I, I appreciate the fact that this game tries some interesting stuff and yeah. adds to the adds to the jobs, you know, system, which I guess probably gets a lot of use in Final Fantasy 14, right? Yeah, but other well, than that, yeah, you don't really see it anymore. And, and I 13. love jobs. Did thirteen have jobs? Yeah, that the whole thing was switching up your party composition and changing them between jobs. Like you do that in the like, uh, and you have different strategies saved. 
So like they'd be a Ravager, or a Commando, or a Medic. I never really thought of that as jobs. But it is. Is it? Yeah. But was it just those three? Yeah. Well, then that's... Okay, we got it. It's not... <laughs> it's basically it tank, DPS, and healer. Yeah. Well, anyway. So the best thing about this first fight with Ormi is that he's learned a new ability, and it's called Huggles. And it's very sad, because we have this big man giving you Huggles, but it kept party wiping me, where in real life, <laughs> I haven't had Huggles since 2019. That's I need crazy. <laughs> the, uh, the Ormi and Logos fights are so fucking easy. They are. I if you, I always they do the songstress so and cast the do the dark dance on them, and they never hit me. Yeah, dark dance is great. Yeah, um, but I I was doing it. Vanessa saw me. I had dark, the dark dance going the whole time, and yeah, uh, it wasn't working somehow. Yeah, it was really weird. I was like, well, this should be the strategy to stop it, but it's not working, and then I died. <laughs> huh. I don't know. Anyway. So that's the Ormi fight. Uh, you can go to Logos's room, uh, which is in the secret basement. And there's a few things of note. It uh, gives you a little bit of environmental storytelling about Logos. Like, there is a digital picture frame on the wall that is a picture of him and LeBlanc and Ormi together. And then on his bed stand is a framed picture just of LeBlanc. <laughs> and also his guns are over the bed. That's how you know it's Logos's room. Although I was thinking maybe this is Logos and Ormi's room, and it's just more decorated. Do you share a room? No, because we see Ormi's room shortly after this. Do you? Yeah. Which one was Ormi's room? It's right down the hall. Uh, oh, was that the room where the sphere was? Yeah. The other sphere, I mean. Yeah, it also has a picture of LeBlanc, and uh, in oh. Logos's room, though, you find LeBlanc's perfume. Which I, is an accessory. Oh, oh, oh. And I it do. has hit point and magic point stroll on it. Ooh. I need to go back and get that. Can I go back mm. and get that? I don't know. Oh, jeez. I miss Better everything. start over. Uh, <laughs> nope. <laughs> yep. <laughs> start over from scratch. Hey, John, <laughs> is this the game that uh, crashes out and breaks if you get to 100 saves? No. Is it? What game is that? So you're telling me that if when I get to 100 saves, I can't be like, oops, this game is broken. I don't want to be on this season anymore. I don't think that was the thing. Matthew <laughs> Van Zant. Yeah, fuck. Hey, Vanessa, don't say people's names. Oh, no. Bleep that out. <laughs> bleep that out. <laughs> I'll bleep it all out. <laughs> um, what's the game? There's a game that if you get to 100 saves, it breaks. What is it? Nobody knows? No. We've for sure talked about it on the show a hundred times. The only reason Skyrim? I know about it is because of you nerds. Wait, what? Is it Skyrim? I don't on know. On PS3? I'm asking you this question. I think I'm the like one a that PS3 asked the question. Skyrim. Anyway, uh, so when you come in... Yeah, but I'm wrong all the time. You should be asking me anything. <laughs> there is a sphere there. It's even better when you're wrong. The sphere is of the aftermath of a crimson swap. What what some the what sounds like Ormi talking and he's recording. He calls the crimson squad selection exercise, and everyone's just dead. The whole <laughs> everyone's just dead. And then he's talking to Ormi uh, to Logos, and Logos says, uh, "They're not all dead. You can't count. We're missing three people and their recorder. So how many is that total? It's four. And yeah, and I think someone else is there too, right? I don't because no. I thought we heard someone say, "Did you say something?" Oh, maybe, maybe. I'm worried that it's news. I'm worried he a baddie. I think he, he is, is a baddie. He's a bad talking guy. about how wanting can to you get look at him and, that gun and, mm. and think? I mean, he, just look at him. He's definitely a bad guy. Mm. Aside, you're you're still into Seymour. When has that stopped you before? Seymour was just misunderstood. Seymour tried to kill the entire planet. Yeah, yeah, because he thought it would be good and better. Good and better. Uh, so you get into a fight with Logos and Ormi. Logos is very upset about catching you sn snooping in his room. And uh, you fight them. And after that, they run away but activate the alarm, which says that booby traps are enabled. 
Booby. <laughs> Point your booby traps north and hit the gas. What's that? What's that uh, song by Fergie about her boobies? Uh, my humps. My lovely lady humps. That's not Fergie, uh, is it? Yeah, no, yeah. That's that's Fergie. That's he's Fergie. thinking about bootylicious, and that's a no. That's Beyonce a Destiny song. song. Oh, John's song. talking about boobs. Yeah, t- they th- actually says something about my boobies. Like it, she actually says boobies in the song. It's very odd. Anyway, booby trap. Uh, there you start getting these like Indiana Jones style spikes that you have to <laughs> run away from. Uh, I did not. I don't think you get killed by them. It was really weird. They knocked me off a platform at one point. Yeah, they knocked you. No, but you have to get hit by them to get to the first switch yeah because i was very clever and avoided it and then i was sticky stuck there's no reward for actually dodging it yeah it's really (laughs) dumb you have to get hit and uh yeah so after you dodge it then you get access to one of the switches and there's two more hidden around and that will deactivate the wall and allow you access to the treasure room the treasure room so that one's shaped like army's shield like the door is a circle right uh the door is a circle but lots of things are circles okay i thought you think ormy's bedroom is the treasure room yeah i I just i I never saw his bedroom well who do you you definitely saw the two bedrooms weird i only went to the one bedroom oh you didn't go get the crimson squad sphere i got the crimson squad sphere i didn't get the other thing though i guess Oh, okay. Mm. Anyway, uh, so inside is uh, the both pieces of the sphere, which they collected. And uh, that means that uh, you've caught what you came for. Unfortunately, uh, LeBlanc then catches you going after the treasure, and she's, uh, she's real mad. And you get fight three against, this time, Logos, LeBlanc, and Ormi. It's not that unfortunate. Again, it's a very easy fight. Yep. Yeah. Just kind of knock them out one at a time. Not a lot to it. And she says, uh, hey, we were getting the sphere for Nuge. Or as she says, <laughs> Nuji Wooji. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, she uh, says, well, take a look at it. And the sphere has more about uh, the Vegna gun. Which has teeth. Yeah. Yeah. It's real cheesy for this game to be like, uh oh, second kaiju. Mm hmm. It has it's teeth. Sin too. Teeth uh, gun. And uh, LeBlanc's like, yeah, this was this is under Bevel. So I guess New Yevon has a lot of secrets still. And uh, but but Barilai already told me about it. He already said it was there. Oh no, he said he wouldn't tell me where it was. That was ah. it. Ah. Okay, so I guess I didn't know it was right under there in the big complex, which I probably would have guessed anyways. If she got the sphere for Nuge and he just left, why doesn't he have the sphere? They already watched it. Oh, uh, okay. Because their their relationship is features poor communication. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess he could have watched it already. Yeah. And uh, so then LeBlanc are like... uh we're all on the same side because LeBlanc, because uh, her and Nuji are going to take apart the Vegna gun. Nuji Wuji? Because, yeah, because Rika's mm-hmm. like, well, it's a machina, right? All you have to do is like go at it and then like figure out how it comes apart and then take it apart. Mm-hmm. And LeBlanc's like, yeah, that's what we're going to do. So I think we're all on the same side. Yeah, Ooh. she's sort of like negs you now. She's like, aren't you going to do your part to save Svira again? And Yuna's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then she does uh, so they're like well, well we'll be on your stupid airship we'll meet you on the airship and then we'll go and Yuna's like I'm just gonna drift stare off into space for a moment I thought that after the eternal calm everything would be peaceful but it's not and it still sucks <laughs> yeah <laughs> turns out people still suck Yuna <laughs> Well, that's sad. So uh, that was the end of of LeBlanc's Chateau. Next stop, Bevel. Now, depending Mm -hmm. on whether or not you gave that sphere to New Yevon or to uh, the Youth League will depend on the reception you get there. Ah, 
I got a very poor reception indeed. You had to make a fight? I had to make a fight. And then I got to the end and there were some guards. There were like four of them just standing around. So Mm -hmm. I went up to talk to one and he's like, I was just going to pretend that you aren't here. But since you insist on coming over, fine, we'll make a fight. (laughs) Uh, one thing that Logo says at the start of this is, a girly man like that doesn't stand a chance without his escort. (laughs) (laughs) Which, like, Logos is the most Fraser Craney of all of them. He's the most, like, non-traditional masculine. Is he he defensive about it? Is that why he's lashing out at Barilai? Maybe. Maybe Barilai is his ex. Oh, uh, yeah, Logos is the one who talks like this. Yeah, and then Logos, like, caught Barely with his escort and was like, what are you doing? Oh. I thought we had something special. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Uh, so you get to inside the temple. Barely isn't there, but they kind of let you, like, uh, okay, well, in my version, they're just happy to see me anyways, but they bring me up there and Barely's not around. Like, I can't yeah, we believe don't know where he you is. sided with fucking New Yevon, you I wanted to try and see what it was like so that we could get the two (laughs) perspectives. Yeah, I'm just dabbling in conservative religious theocracies. (laughs) (laughs) So when you talk to them uh, inside the temple, they don't fight you, right? No, they don't. They're just like, hey, everyone's super upset. Uh, The guards are in a frenzy. We're really sorry about that. Please go find our proctor. Did we talk about? Right. Did I was I I was paying attention, but I thought. But did we talk about how they came to the ship and like bossed everybody around? Well, they yeah they do boss everyone around, including brother. He at does the end not... of Chateau Le, Chateau LeBlanc, they are just like, hey, we're going with you now, and then yeah. they just go to the ship. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's pretty great, but they don't siege the city with you. They're like, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Well, they're they're, they're, they're kind there, of around though. Yeah, they, they'll follow up. They just don't do anything or or help. Yeah, so they're right. useless. Yeah. So, uh, Barilai isn't there. Then there's like an opening little couple of switches you have to pu- push so that you can go downstairs. Mm-hmm. And uh, then you do some more mazes. These are like, yeah. uh, without the move, at least the passages, because last time we did this, there was like a moving walkway thing. Right. You had to stand on the things and hit the button at the right time to make yeah. it turn and stuff. I'm glad we don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. Although I think this, this whole thing sucks in a different a way. A lot of this, though, is like this particular area that used to be the puzzle that we're talking about. Like, it was... um. All the treasure, like you, if it, you can go straight to the goal and ignore the treasure chests because they're literally all like some potions, some yeah, remedies. Yeah, it's like a lot. Like it's we've like got eighteen remedies. Yeah, thirty-two but I've got, potions. I've got like a hundred remedies mm-hmm. and a hundred potions. So it's like I don't give a shit. But there is, uh, so you when you get to the second level of it, uh, there's a weird hype. Hel- I guess it. Oh, is it the barkeep? The barkeep has followed you down because he was worried about you guys. Miss you, nah. I was worried <laughs> about you. You do know my name, right? It would be super weird if you still didn't know my name at this point. Of course, barkeep. <laughs> uh, so you you get down to the next level, and the next level is is a bit weirder. It's like this six towered thing uh, around a circle, and you have to like uh, Yuna slides down the chain to get there, like oh, some kind on of. On the way, remember we see those cages. Yeah, what was There's that? There's like about? a rotating cage room, and. Riku says, oh, this is where we first saw Tidus when he was on the sphere no, and he was in a that's cage. That's after this. That's after this. No, it's way before. Is it? I thought that yeah, was like where you get down before. to the rot four. No, because the rotating yeah. thing is in the is after this. No, yeah, it's after. Yeah. But LeBlanc <laughs> and her goons are there and they don't come with you. Oh, I guess they do come with you. They do. They just follow, like, behind you. I they... swear it was before. I think it's right after this that, that Riku says, this is where we saw him. They don't All say right. Titus, because they can't say Titus, because you could change his name in the first game, which is really dumb. Oh. oh is that why they don't say his name? Yeah. 
I thought they were just being weird and coy. It was, maybe <laughs> me it was too. like, do not say his name in front of me. Get his name out of your mouth. <laughs> Don't want to hear it. <laughs> I wish you could import your name. This is where we first saw ass butt. <laughs> do, you think, do you think they'd pronounce it Titus or Titus? I don't know. Titus, probably. I think it's Titus. Lame. Yeah. So this first puzzle is not really explained by the game, and and like five. It took me three guides to find out one that explained it properly. What? Where it's like you choose first, you choose which tower or which plate you're going to move, and then you use the red towers to move them counterclockwise or clockwise, and that's it. Like, it's a pretty simple puzzle, but it's so badly explained by the game and every guide I read. <laughs> what? I don't really know what you're talking about. I just it, went around and did each tower. Yeah. And the, then it opened. There's, But there's, like, six plates, and if you want to get the ribbon, which is uh, the first oh. ribbon that you can get in the game, I you have to get all... I could have got a ribby. Yeah, and... it's, it's down, down six plates that you Aww. have to go down. But... It's so not explained in a very irritating I mean, way. That describes ninety nine percent of this game. There's some big old monsters when you activate these towers. Yeah, one of them is that boss from like early in Final Fantasy X when you're with Riku on her boat. Like the, the fish th- with like the cage belly. Yeah, yeah, you fight one of them. Oh, really? And- I didn't fight one of those. And yeah, there's like it's two randomly one of two big boss monsters you can fight. Hmm. What's the other one? A, a robot. Oh, yeah, I got all robots. I think oh, was <laughs> all ro- robots all the way down. Oh no! It, but it was it was it was weak against holy. I think it was like a demonic machina thing. Hmm. Hmm. Because I used Excalibur on it to kill it. Oh, good job. Yeah. Uh. So this. Uh. What was I? Oh yeah. Did I tell you about my big brain moment about what I figured out what this game is and why it seems weirdly familiar? Is it reminds me of the end of every Final Fantasy game where it opens up and you can go anywhere mm-hmm. and there's like a lot of extra mini games and mm-hmm. content, but it feels like they made a whole game out of that. Yeah. So it's the all end game content, the game. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. the DLC. It is. It's, it's the- end game DLC to Final <laughs> Fantasy X. That actually describes it perfectly well <laughs> that's all this is yeah mm-hmm. it's pokemon hot and cold which is i'm not gonna correct <laughs> i recognized halfway through saying it i said the wrong thing <laughs> and it's triple triad and it's uh doing fighting necrid or no what was the big Necron. marble what's the big marble you could fight alta alma Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, the big super boss. Yeah. It's all those things rolled up into one game with no actual main game. What was that old super boss's name? I feel like it was a a, a four-letter word. Don't hmm. say four-letter words on the podcast. Poo. Puh. <gasps> John! <laughs> I almost got away with it, then I added that extra P. Yeah. It was fine until then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Boat. Was it? Gall. Was it Omega, was it? Could have been. No. I don't know. <laughs> John, I tried to Google your your question about that the Fergie song where she talks about her boobies. And yep. there were such hilarious headlines. I couldn't find what you were talking about, but I did find some pretty hilarious headlines. Uh, the one I'm thinking of, it, it might not be, it might have been like... The other band there, the ones who said, like, uh, don't ya, pussycat dolls, was like, something, something, <laughs> boobies. It was part of, like, a, a rap in the song. I th- I, it sounds like sound, What you're saying sounds familiar, but I can't I think that it. might be a Black Eyed Peas song. Okay. Anyway. Uh, back to Bevel. So, after you do this puzzle, you may or may not have got your ribbon. This took me two, or an hour and a half or something. I spent way too long trying to figure out how to do this. Until I found a good explanation. And then the next stop is the where Vanessa was talking about, the big rotating gall puzzle. This is terrible, too. And it's another one I think you could just fucking walk right past. You, well, you know, because you have to get on that for some reason. Oh yeah, to get to to get to Barrelai. I didn't get on it. Oh, what? I was right. You can walk right past it. 
Or how do you get to barrel eye that? Oh, right. He's in the other way. So what do you need that for? You don't need it for anything. You just walk by it. Yeah, I don't remember getting on it at all. Or oh. you or you do the whole fucking two hour puzzle <laughs> to yeah. get a fucking <laughs> Shinra bangle or whatever. Yeah, I did do that. You're right. I did I think like a dress sphere grid or something. Yeah. There's a whole puzzle here about oh. like getting it to align different levels so you can walk around it. How do you get it to do anything? There's a big button, but it's off camera. My Matt was actually like on the chat saying, how do I stop this thing? And because there's a button, a big glyph, but you have to like literally walk off screen to get it. Yeah. No, I had found that. What I couldn't figure out was how do you stop it in time to jump on it? It was, I got it. It was dumb. It's yeah. dumb. This is dumb. Man. I just waltzed right past that thing. I right feel thing. like a big dunce now. You did you get the the Dark Knight sphere in the next hallway? No. I did. I did get that. In fact, that might be where I stopped playing. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's two more bosses right after. Yeah, that. I know. And I saw that and was like, I don't want to do that. Oh my gosh! I missed so much. I wonder if I can go back. Oh uh, yes, I think you can. Okay. You just have to yeah. restart the game. No, no, I think I think you can go to uh I think you can go to the uh l- uh back to the Bavel and just mm-hmm. go there. I think. Uh, cuz yeah, there is a dark knight uh dress sphere there which unlocks oh, cool. like the Final Fantasy 4 main character class there with darkness and all I that. I wonder who and- I'll give that to. I feel like It seems like a pain, right? It does seem like a pain and she is maxed out as a warrior, but I am kind of tired of Gun Mage Yuna. It gives you like 100% extra HP as well, which is useful. That's handy. Like, yeah. That's pretty cool. And all and instead of consuming MP, all your moves take HP. Huh. Oh. Well, hence the and they have like super high defense and attack. Uh, and it's like Cecil from Final Fantasy IV, which is rad. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone loves a good old Cecil. I haven't played mm-hmm. that one other than the first like hour. We Cecil play it on was the like show sometime. Yeah, we will. It's a big plot point that is because uh, basically four is like fan fiction for three, where each character is a different job. Yeah, and uh, and it's all about him being a dark knight and like how how dark his life is because of it and all the bad things he's done. I mean, that's a clever idea. I think. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's neat. It's def- got them I- twins in it too, right? They're kids. Yep, twins. Pal- they're, yeah, Palum and Porum. <laughs> Palum and Porum. What great twin names. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wasn't that the twin in six? Who's the kid in six? Uh, Realm? The girl? Oh, Realm. Realm. That's right. <laughs> There's also Gao. Gao. Friends. Gao. <laughs> <laughs> so there's... Uh, uh, yeah, the Dark Knight uh, little dress sphere is there. It's kind of an annoying puzzle to get get it, but it takes two minutes, so definitely definitely worth. Lo- I would look up a video of how to do it because every explanation I read online is is wrong. From the <laughs> for the Dark Knight sphere, yeah, I got yeah. it from. I just used that guide that you sent. Okay, I don't know. I, I had a problem with it. Maybe I could just figure it out myself. Mm-hmm. Maybe mm-hmm. you can. So you walk down the hallway right by the Dark Knight Sphere, and you turn around the corner, and who do you bump into in a real meat cute? Verily. Verily. And he's like, I know why you're here. Oh, he also like is an ASMR talking guy. Yeah. He's soothing. Uh, you're here to uh, destroy the Vegna gun. You're here to uh, destroy the Vegna gun. But the Vegna gun must not must not be touched he says well, it he very- says he says don't you think we would have destroyed it already if we could have mm-hmm. okay but you I'm couldn't like- destroy sin and Yuna could yeah so what's your argument here guy and the church is so like anti l bed have you got some l beds down there like a mechanic yeah have you tried zapping it with a fucking lightning gun that would kill a lot of stuff. <laughs> and uh, Nuge, uh, he says, and Nuge, he cannot be trusted. And you know, it's like, you were talking to Nuge? He's like, yeah, kind of. 
and he sees just wants he doesn't want to fight. He just wants to keep everyone away from Vegna Gun. And Pain Vegna is like Vegna Gun can only be disassembled with a Phillips head screwdriver. And we have <laughs> only flatheads. <laughs> Pain just rushes him. She's like, screw this, I'm fighting him. And he's like, Pain? Mm-hmm. Do you think they're siblings? I don't, ooh, that might be, because they do have the same color hair. They have the same color hair. We all know that means siblings. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen siblings, and they have the same color hair. Mm -hmm. I've seen those Weasleys. Yep. I've seen uh, Jim and his twin sister. And I've seen uh, Matt and Bannon. Bannon has blonde hair. Yeah, my brother and sister were blonde when I was kids, and we, me and my other brother were brown-haired. Yeah, Ben they, is blonde, and also, I'm brown hair. Also, my brother and sister had uh, blue eyes, and, and uh, Steve and I have brown eyes. Oh, well, um, they're I adopted. Think. I'm sorry to tell you, but yeah, that's I got the only explanation. News <laughs> how genetics work, Johnny. Wait a minute. I feel like there's some holes in that that theory because we all look a lot alike. Yeah, actually, I think what Vanessa meant to say, John, is that you are adopted. Oh, <laughs> Vanessa and I are your real mother and father. <laughs> Did every kid wish they were adopted and had mysterious, interesting parents? No, like royalty. Yeah, or vampires or something. Vampires. Wouldn't that I... make you a vampire if your parents were vampires? Yeah, not necessarily. You didn't want to be a cool vampire. Oh when yeah, you were actually, a kid? yeah. Vanessa's right. There's an order of operations thing. The answer is maybe. <laughs> right. It depends. Are you like a Renezme baby, or <laughs> did your parents become vampires after birthing you? <laughs> exactly. That's a good question. That's why Bemdaz is so important. And you're the one person they won't kill. Oh my god! Somebody get me a pen and paper. Ooh, yeah. Actually, mm. yeah. That's great. We'll all write it together so we can be, and we'll like make a fictional lady writer who's written it. Why can't I be the lady? I don't oh, like the right. idea of three men writing a book together and being like, "Well, our pen Vanessa. name is I'm female. A <laughs> <laughs> pen name is Abigail." It's just so. Vanessa <laughs> wants to take all the credits. Yeah, <laughs> someone has to be the face of this operation. Yeah. So uh, will will it the sure parents be? Had gonna be any of you all goes. <laughs> Will the parents feel like dreamy teenagers and then their child is becoming a teenager too and it gets weird because like they're all having to pretend to be at the same school? No, I think their child is has to be a vampire hunter who was oh. recruited by these people who knew that their parents were vampires now and they're like, this child is the only one that could possibly get close enough to kill them. I think John's idea has better potential to be like a Disney Channel movie, and that's where the money is these days. Yeah, Vanessa sounds very violent. I want an HBO original series. Yeah, Vanessa wants an HBO show. It's like (laughs) Deadwood, but vampires. They made that. It was called True Blood. It was fucking horrific. (laughs) <laughs> I've never stopped watching a show in the middle of its last season out of disgust before. Oh, I did that too. True blood. <laughs> By the time they were like, these step siblings are fucking, I was like, you know what? I don't know what this show's about anymore, but it's not for me. <laughs> what are the odds that Riverdale does have vampires? Because I feel like that show could have vampires. That show's going to be like, uh, we think these people are vampires, but turns out they're just uh, cannibalistic serial killers who are playing a vampire role playing game. They uh, got really into. They won't call it masquerade. They'll call it like they got really into uh, disguise the vampire story. Mm-hmm. And uh, y'all really and, showing your true colors here, not knowing about Vampironica. What now? Vampironica? Obviously. Is that a spin off comic? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Is it real? There's also it one is? where Jughead's a werewolf. Well, this <laughs> there one there's ones where they're all zombies and there's ones where the predator's there. And... Yeah. Oh, I heard about the predator one. They had a real horror thing going on for a minute when they rebooted Sabrina as like a dark teenage witchcraft book, but Right, right. I have a feel, for some reason in my mind, and I could be wrong about this, but I feel like then that series never finished, but it was so popular that they went ahead and kickstart, or like they went ahead and, and started publishing a Vampironica series, and then that one didn't finish, and then they started publishing <laughs> a Jughead the Werewolf one, and then that one didn't finish, because that seems to be their thing. 
We'll put it out two like issues. You're and saying then... vamp erotica. Vamp yeah. Veronica, like Veronica. Yeah, I, I, I'm vamp- with Vanessa though. Like does vamp- sound Vanessa. like Vamp Veronica. Yeah, I think it should be Vamp Veronica. Yeah. Um, it is Vamp That was on Vampironica. Showtime in the 90s. Vamp Veronica. <laughs> <laughs> that was definitely an image comic book in the 90s. Podcast idea we all watch and review old softcore pornos from the 90s that were on premium cable. <laughs> Just give me that one with Jamie Lee Curtis to watch over and over again, okay? No, it's not Jamie <laughs> Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Barrel Presley. Barrel I, uh, Nobody's going to call fight- me on Jamie Lee Curtis porn, really? I, I, I died against Barrel I several times until I <laughs> think I had just to... just moving on. <laughs> I had to silence him. I think I had to silence him or something. There's something I could I did that, that got him <sighs> to not kill me quite as much. Uh, I beat him really easy. I don't understand what you're doing with this game because yeah, we are the same level. Oh, we're both like 31. Yeah, or oh. I was even lower I'm than, 31, than 31, 31 when I fought this guy. So I'm, I'm like doing something wrong. I'm yeah. like, I'm getting destroyed here. Do you have the game in wait mode? No. Oh, John. No, I don't have mm. it in wait mode. Wait mode doesn't do a fucking thing. All it wait does. mode does is if you go into your like items, it pauses the game. Yeah, or like your menu of spells or whatever. It, it's, okay, that ain't, I'll try that. that. Doing Maybe it. that might help. And yeah. I'll, I'll also do what you did. I have to level up and get that stop break or that break dance because that sounds really useful. Yeah, All and the definitely level helpful. up your Aga spells because you yeah. want to be doing a thousand damage a turn if you can. Yeah, and I was doing like three hundred. Not enough. Oh, and the Not- hey, the jitterbug. The that's the other one that jitterbug. I use a ton. The jitterbug casts haste on the whole jitterbug. party. Ooh. You put the, the boom, boom boom into, into my heart. heart. Hey, yeah. my soul sky high when, when you're loving starts. Jitterbug into my brain. Yeah, yeah. Goes a bang, bang, bang till my feet do the same. Poison Ivy. That was the name of the porn with Jamie Lee Presley. Something anyway. Happened. Something <laughs> ain't right. My best, best friend told, told me what you, you did, did last night. night. You left me sleeping in my bed. I was dreaming, but I should have been with you instead. Wake me, me up before you And go, then you had to go. fight Bahamut. <laughs> or anything that's before, not this <laughs> before that so something there's another weird thing about the pain backstory here you defeat barrel eye oh what okay did i miss it what happens when you defeat barrel eye is he dead i guess because he is not there anymore uh huh. so i guess you either evaporated him with magic or you <laughs> chopped him up into many little pieces disintegrated um, that piece of shit yeah. and then pain <laughs> is like I have to go to this gun. And Yuna's like, okay, I guess you have your reasons. And Riku's like, we'll talk about this later, though. And Pain goes, much later. And she goes stomping <laughs> off. And they're just like, okie dokes. <laughs> I do like how trusting they are of each other. That's not something you see in RPGs much. Like yeah, that kind that's of, true. It's like, okay, you probably, you, I'm sure you okay, you go ahead, do your thing. We'll talk about mm-hmm. it later. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. But then you meet up with her in a second anyways. Because you yeah. get into the other room. And uh, this is the one from the video. And then, uh, oh, no, it's because she sees. So it's Bahamut coming yeah. to attack. Yeah, it's like a sad Bahamut. And Yuna's like, everything is weaving together like this is fate. And you have to fight Bahamut. She, Yuna's been getting a lot of like moody Sarah Jessica Parker voiceovers. Mm. And Yuna is not happy about this prospect of fighting Bahamut. No, because she cares for the. She thought she sent all the aeons, and they shouldn't be here. Remind so why us is what here? is an aeon. An aeon is like a manifestation of the faith into a big monster that is friends with a a, a summoner, summoner, and then like they have to kill or sacrifice an aeon at the end. I forget how that part goes. They have Remind to send, they have to send the aeons, right? Isn't that what they do to them? Mm-hmm ascending but the faith are people right they're dead people yeah so aeons are a big cluster of dead people that are helping can you remind me what pyre flies are those are like the little souls you see flying around oh the little dot also like, people also yeah. people also people so pyre flies are faith 
No, faith is a clump of fireflies. A faith is a clump is of fireflies. Okay, now I feel like I'm wrong. No, wait. A faith <laughs> is... <laughs> you know, I sounded so confident before, but now I don't even know. Do people still need to be sent in this world? Because you know doesn't seem to be sending anyone. But, but, no. when, but, but when everyone was dead... At the Crimson Sphere video, you saw their little their little fireflies hanging over their bodies, right? Yeah, fireflies yeah, are still around. Isn't the reason why they needed a sending is because uh, something to do with Yevon and ref- you could like come back from the far plane or whatever? Yeah, if you didn't get sent, you could just like refuse to die. And be I don't think you can do that anymore. Living dead in your body. That's a good question. I don't have the answer to it. <laughs> Listeners, if you have the answer, squarerootspodcast at gmail.com. Oh, we should also like look at our email sometime. We have a couple in there. Yeah. yeah. So it's a Bahamut. Uh, this is a pretty pretty easy fight, even for me. Oh, music and, go good, though. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Music very good. Yeah, it just <laughs> goes to like... A piano music with no backing or anything like that. And it's mm-hmm. very different from what we've experienced before and very sad and plaintive. Mm-hmm. Because cause she don't want to fight the Bahamut. No. But she does. And after the Bahamut is released or killed or whatever, uh, they look down and the good old everyone's back, LeBlanc and everyone, and there is no Vegna gun, just a big hole. LeBlanc says it must have uh, heard she was coming and fled in terror. Mm-hmm. I like LeBlanc. A gun can't <laughs> run away. But guns gun normally can. don't have teeth either. True. It looks like a skull face. Mm-hmm. It looked like the big boss of <laughs> too. Spoiler for <laughs> too. Whoa. <laughs> bleepity bleep yeah uh it's all gone there's just a big hole in the ground and they're like well what you gonna do at this point nina says i could feel the eternal calm crumbling yeah oh uni yeah Mm -hmm. she's like i sacrificed so much for peace and now it's just slipping away what's a good way to cap this poignant moment I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the a perfect call way. from idiot brother. <laughs> our favorite character. Because <laughs> there is an emergency <laughs> back on the ship. Something super bad is happening. Mm-hmm. Yuna has Hope to come back fire. immediately. And that's and... the end of chapter two. Yeah. What's the bad thing? We're going to have to wait to find out. What? We'll have to find out next time on Square Roots. But before we go, there is a bullshit mini game we can talk about, and that is the massage game. Yeah. It's like a battleship, kind of, except it's like the battleship is your orgasm. Yeah, but it's also like a hot and cold kind of game, because it can be like you're getting hotter. Mm -hmm. Let's just say it's what? It's a three by three grid. So it's not like that exacting as to when you're warm and when you're cold. They can be very close together. A good prize if you do it in under 15 turns, I think. Oh. Yeah. And you, and you like, give her 32 orgasms or something like that. Yeah, I didn't get a prize. I got a prize. I got a gold hairpin. Well, you're great at giving women orgasms, I guess. Wow. <laughs> Who knew? Nobody knew. <laughs> so, uh, next time on Square Roots, oh, we are going to- what if you were, though? What if, like, the maestro of the female <laughs> orgasm wasn't interested in women? <laughs> oh, no. But it'd have to be pressed into service anyways. Yeah, it's The world it's needs like your fingers. The world's greatest concert pianist who's never sat down at the keyboard. <laughs> exactly. Wow, Jim missed so much. <laughs> a scientific genius with no access to a laboratory. It's true. Jim, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. here's how I leveled up. I watched a documentary on Disney Plus called Science Fair, mm-hmm. and it's about the International Science Fair for kiddies, like high school age kids who have scientific inventions, and they're all so smart and so passionate, and many of them are girls. And it made me think so much about all the technology that we've lost by 
not letting women into science for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. So it's like Battleship, but for an orgasm, you say? <laughs> oh, 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 that Vanessa just walked out of the, the house. I think <laughs> I can hear her getting into my car. <laughs> She's driving off in my car now. Huh. Well, all her stuff's here, so really, who's the loser here? Hey, I'm back. It turns out we're not actually allowed to leave the house these days. So. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Can I have my car keys back? No. Next time, we are going to finish the mini games of Chapter 3. All the side Yay. content, I mean. Yay. You know, all the side stuff. Yay. Just... All right. So that's it. Matt. I think that's the end of the show. What are you squarely against? Ooh, this game sucks. This is maybe the worst game we've played on this show. It's wearing on me a little bit, too. But... I'll get, I'll get through it. The mini games are terrible. The plot is fucking non-existent nonsense. The characters are all awful. One thing that that always makes me laugh though is that a lot of the the side characters are they look really shitty, but the main characters are so lovingly rendered. Yeah. Like their faces are so smooth yep. and it looks really good. But everybody else, like brother, looks like a, a PS one character. Yeah, they look like <laughs> trash. It's wild. Uh, you know, if you like this game, I'm sure it's fine if it's your thing. If you like post-game content, I don't like post-game content. Uh, anyway, I'm squarely against this game. We're four episodes into this, and... Oof. <laughs> is, like, is Vanessa, like, rummaging through an old attic, or like... I, what? I thought she was, like, building a doghouse. <laughs> I thought she was, like, uh, putting a saddle on a horse. I thought yeah. she was gonna run away. <laughs> I uh, I recorded most of this show lying on my floor tonight, so there might be some ambient noise. And now I just went and fed the cat because the cat was banging on the food bag, which was making that whap 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 sound. I'm glad I'm not adding this week. He has been fed. Yeah, sorry, John. There's going to be a lot of ambience. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Uh. Do you want to toss off that squarely against there, Matt? Toss me off, bud. I did to- oh, toss it off. Who should I toss <laughs> off tonight? Jim, what are you squarely against? <laughs> I, want, I want to be roundly for the, the lesbian massage. <laughs> that was pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, it was just a sex scene. <laughs> it was just a sex scene in the middle of a video game, which I guess is pretty normal these days. So, you know what? Cutting edge for its time. <laughs> John, what are you squarely against? I'm roundly for Jim's pronunciation of massage. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> I've never heard it said that way before. You want to go get a massage? <laughs> Vanessa, what are you roundly for or squarely against? I am roundly for this game. I absolutely love it. It's bananas. It's funny. It's bright and colorful. There are many good outfits. It's the greatest game we have ever played on this show. Like, everything that happens is next level bananas it's all disc three crazy <laughs> that's <laughs> like true disc three crazy pureness including the battle system i love watching the dress sphere change animations so do i they're really fun mm-hmm. then i turn them off when i'm getting angry because mm. <laughs> i, yeah, I turn the them off too <laughs> <laughs> all right uh jim let's let's head towards the exit 
Yeah, so that's it for this episode, everyone. Um, we'll, we're going to do our weekly Patreon plug where we tell you about all the cool stuff we have available on our Patreon if you were to sign up. Um, let's see, at the $5 level, you'll get access to all of our bonus stuff. We've got some level up episodes. We've got some instant classics. We've got some square roots versus eps. Um, and also you get the ability to vote on our mainline games when we open that up a couple of times a year. And then at the $3 level, you just get a, just, just get the episodes. Wow. I would, I would phrase it the other way around. Talking about getting all these great episodes, and then at the five dollar level, you get to vote. I don't know how I many do you give them the good stuff up front and be like, "Well, and then at three, I guess you get some of it." <laughs> and then you know, it's all it's called positioning, John. Oh, I know all about positioning. <laughs> Just ask <laughs> ask <laughs> earlier in the episode. <laughs> My secret talent. And uh, the last perk you get, no matter what tier you're on, uh, we will read your name um, at the end of the episode, like I'm about to start doing right now. Uh, Let's see. Benjamin Avner, Metal Gear Solid 1 in 2021, Brady A. Berman, Armin Hammer, Robert J. Defendi, Jameson Scroto Baggins, Mostly Rational Person, Robert T, Lex Averial, Gray Code, Bree Girth, Andy Smith, Mr. Mallard, Vanessa's True Real Actual Mom, Vanessa's Mom, Pain Secret Dress Fear can be found at Hot Topic, Cake Ninja, Amanda Douglas, Robert M. Pollum, Reddit is Harold Lauder, All Alona in a All Alona in the Time of Corona, Matt Jorgensen, Huxley Iguana, Chief Hazard Built, George Brady, Matthew Sounds Like TJ Miller, Florian Jonas Kramer, Ward Childress, and Justin Hamm. Matt O. Matt, Matt. We Matt, would Matt. also like to thank Michael Crawford, Devin Sloan, Sexy Grandma's Boy Toy is G. Bailey, Grayson, What Can I Do for Nuge, The Pen Was Mighty Indeed, What Can I Do for Nuge, M.B., Ryan Miller, John's Problematic Fave Brother, James Hostetler, Sean, Fine, say everyone's name, at least it annoys Matt. Paul Bursch, Watch in the Wind, Rising Hopper, Patrick Wubbs Bears, New Artist Vanessa Keys and the Lockpicks. What? Give me Persona 4 in 2020 or give me Jim's place on the podcast. We will not. <laughs> Resty Kamada, The Mighty Monarch, Eric Garby, Wonder Swan, Joshua Bennett, Tavis Nickerson, Justin Rash, Aaron Bachman, Jordan McNeil, Final Fantasy X Part t- Ugh. Final Fantasy X Part 2 is the Wario Wear of Final Fantasy. Tom, Ben Davis, Vanessa's fourth mom, Mary, Queen of Scoffs, Kenny Sloth, Jake Dickerson, Mitchell Hart, Mitchell Jarman, and Andrew Leinart. Adam Zimmerman, Stephen Paget, David Green, Tabumpkins, Christopher Hines, Christian Go, Saving Sid, Randy Pierce, that one guy, Matthew Newland, have you heard of our Lord and Savior, Beagleosaurus? Laryl of the Claryl, <laughs> Sling Ping Ping Ringy Dingy, Ari Capivara, Andres Rivera, Let Una Sing, Citrus C, Cameron Showy, Chris Penyak, Chris Ryan, Cyril the Wolf, Hudson Roth, Tracy Tanoff, Nathan Poirot, Jonathan Smith. Oh my god, what is this game? The Phantom Scofflaws of the Opera. Chris Wilder, Kiva Moser, Squall would be Cloud in a Fight, Sean Walsh, Jared Collins, Hexagon, Isaac Wright, Still Just Cow. Matthew Casterline, Get Good Nuge, Samu Mitchell, Stu Skeel, Stephen Crock, Ross Hartley, Mike Bloomberg as Shinra, Andrew, DJ Ethro, Nofford, Alexander Jokic, Galendo, Joseph, Tyler Petty, a slightly chubby Waka, Andy, hmm, Aaron Little, Cubby Waka is what Ron calls an excellent night out, Miguel Torres, Andy Best, Jonathan Ellsworth, PJ Enns, what can I do for Nuge? Two I dark- can't hear you. <laughs> Two dark <laughs> nights, a white mage, and a pizza place. Captain Awesome, uh, Brian Pitt, Alex Dulard, a cup o' coffee, 
Kupo Coffee, Kupo and Race Coffee. Jenkins. All right, everybody, that's it for this episode of Square Roots. If you would like an email read on the air, email us at squarerootspodcast at gmail.com. We have a Facebook group. It's called the Square Roots Podcast Group for smart, cool, very attractive people. And we are on Twitter at Square Roots Pod. Should we do a quick email? Mm. Shh. Mm. Let's just do it. Just mm. real fast. <laughs> Let's do one. I'm We're done. Now at the end of the show, really long. this is yes. over. Emails go before read gnomes. We just, you know, we can do one real fast. Mm. Okay. Let's There's see. There's a real mm. long one, though. I'm not prepared for that. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I won't do a real long one. Uh, Did we talk about... Yeah, okay. Dear Square Roots Gang, I'm writing in response to the question you posed about whether Unor LeBlanc planned the concert from the beginning of Final Fantasy X-2. I always assumed it was LeBlanc, while impersonating Yuna, that set the whole thing up. Why RP waited until the concert to attack, because that's what, why, when they knew she'd be there. As far as Yuna not being a dancer, you just have to look at the sending she performs in 10 to know that's not true. In particular, she does one in the CG cutscene after the Sin Whale attacks Kulika. Granted, it's more flowing and graceful dance would be appropriate for real emotion. One of you, I think it was Matt, said their theory would be disproved if Yuna was seen putting on a concert later. I don't want to spoil anything. Let's just say the game has 1,000 words to say about that. Your mm. fan and patron, Chad, a.k.a. Sexy Grandma's Boy Toy is. The concert at the end did prove that Yuna was not the one that put on that concert. <laughs> That's which is not, not the concert la, he's talking about. La, 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 I think there's another concert, Matt. Maybe. I don't know, John. This is as far as I've gotten into this game. Me too. <laughs> Stop spoiling things, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> la, 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 right. la, la. There. I just wanted to do an email because we ask for emails and we never read them. So That's just, yeah, true. We, we haven't read an email in like fucking six we months. We did a whole mailbag episode, remember? We did. We did. That was like last month, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, it was all I Final Fantasy know. VII questions. Yeah. Time has no meaning anymore. We mm -hmm. got some Final Fantasy VII questions after Final Fantasy VII mailbag and it was like, well, too late for you. <laughs> Garbage. <laughs> no, Straight into we'll, the trash. We'll try to We'll try to answer them sometime. No, I won't. Uh, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe away my booms <laughs> on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, thanks to Lacey Johnson for her amazing cover of Real Emotions. Oh, Links so to good. the video and the Lacey Johnson Music YouTube channel are in the show notes. For Square Roots, I am Jim Banks. I'm Matthew Van Zant. I'm Johnny. And I'm Vanessa. Bye. 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 Matthew, you didn't even say hey, it. Hey, listeners, why don't you uh, go ahead and point your titties north and step on the gas? Which way's, which way's north? Northward is the only way my titties point. Right beyond the hazy borders of my heart, I can see a place, it's something. Last time on Square Roots, we catch that chocobo, debt collect a waka, and snag some sweet uniforms. Plus, Riku compares her breast size to Yunen. Seriously, do men think that women really do that? It's not like you sit around measuring each other. Or do you? Tell the truth. <laughs> I know, by now, that forward is the only motion my heart can go. Uh, <clears throat> Jim, who wants to host? Vanessa? Yeah. Me? Well, you did host last time. Do you want to... Here, you can either nominate yourself or one of us. I nominate John Brandon. All right. So he has to do both again? Okay. I didn't well, do it. No. fine. I nominate Matt. No, I won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> hi, 
everybody, and welcome to Square Roots, the classic RPG <laughs> podcast. I'm your host, Vanessa. I'm joined here by my friendos, uh, Matt. 